I create art to try to try to escape, I guess, the <laughs> daily, uh, uh, you know, routines of life that kind of put a lot of stress in you. I just try to come home. I try to make some art, and the art kind of like takes me to a different place. When I was younger, um, I was exposed to a lot of domestic violence. So artwork uh, would take me to just a different place. I'm at a peaceful place when I make artwork. All right, my name is Jaime Valderrama. I am a illustrator, toy maker, toy designer, print maker, and grave robber on the weekends. No, uh, my occupation, I'm actually a UPS driver. Uh, I drive the big uh, semi-trucks for, for a living. It has nothing to do with artwork, but that's my bread and butter. <laughs> I've been an artist my entire life, actually. Um, all the way back from like elementary, I, would, I was always that kid in class that, you know, did all the, all the drawings, you know, the, the comic book art. But like on a professional level, I've been doing it since 2009. Yeah, I've been doing uh, things for magazines, castings, screen prints, the stuff that I love. Primarily, I do a lot of uh, black and white illustrations. Then I go over them with like uh, watercolors, prismacolors, um, gouge. And then aside from that, I do a lot of resin castings. I sort of do a lot of toys. I do a lot of sculpting. I also do a lot of uh, comic book art. I do my own zines. Uh, I print my own stuff. I do my own covers. Uh, believe it or not, a lot of the stuff that I've picked up has been through um, a lot of trial and error. I've never really taken any art classes, like in college or anything like that. So, um, you know, I look at a lot of videos and then I do a lot of research and then I try to um, use those uh, tools to execute the ideas or the, the projects that I want to create. So it all started with stuff that I would see on TV, actually. You know, I would watch cartoons, uh, Ninja Turtles. I would watch, like, uh, Thundercats, uh, Transformers. And I just kind of, like, try to copy that and try to, like, you know, draw it and the way I saw it, in, like, in the books, too. And then I started, uh, you know, getting into comic books, uh, all the stuff that Jim Lee was doing in the 90s for uh, Marvel. I would try to copy that stuff, just try to mimic what I would, you know, what, what I would see in the comics. What inspires me, it's, it's a culmination of things. I mean, life experiences, music, artwork, toys, a lot of uh, vintage uh, science fiction. I, I grew up watching a lot of uh, Twilight Zone, Outer Limits. And I get all that stuff, I put it in a blender, I drink it, I create some type of idea in my head and it just comes out through my hands. And that's the best way I could describe it. As far as like uh, drawings and stuff like that, I've, I've been inspired, inspired by a lot of that stuff that was going on in the late 70s in Europe like Mobius, Philip Drillet, uh, Inke Bilal. All those artists are just like, I hold in high regard and they really inspired me to push that boundary, to push the limits of my drawing capabilities. As far as toy making, it all started with like a, just a dream of trying to make my own toy line. And then eventually I came across people like Dove, Barbarian Rage, Retro Brand, you know, those guys create incredible things. And it just propels me to like try to create things and push my skills to, to its limits. The stuff I create, it's, it's a combination of like science fiction and horror, because I love those two genres. I try to create things that are based on some of my short illustrated stories. You know, I try to create things that are unique, that bring something new to the table. I've been doing the 3.75 inch figures and I've also been doing the, um, the six inch figures. I've been collecting Sufubi lately. So I've kind of been inspired to make Sufubi styled uh, figures. So I've been doing like these roller castings and those figures measure about, I think seven inches tall, about like four inches. And I've been doing these uh, like smaller ones where it's like three inches. And um, they just all been inspired by uh, stuff that I've seen happen in uh, Japan. For the 3.75 inch figures, I would get like a very plain figure and I'll strip it down and then I would make it my own, like I would sculpt on top of that. But the new figures that I've been working on, like the rotor cast figures, the way I make those is that I do original sculpt out of uh, monster clay and then um, I make copies of it. As far as like the materials that I use, I try to use the 327 resin casting uh, resin. 
or I use a 326. I use a 326 for rotor casting because it solidifies faster. I do the Mold Max 30 for the silicone molds. As far as like the stuff that I incorporate into the figures after they're finished and ready to go, I, I try to incorporate like litters, holographic vinyls, materials. My dad did upholstery for a living for so many years. He's retired now, but he would come home with all these different materials that he would uh, use for his, uh, for his work. And I would, I would always be fascinated by all that stuff, like the, the, the shiny, the very vibrant uh, materials. So I try to use some of, I'm inspired by, by that stuff. And I try to use some of that stuff into, incorporate some of that stuff into my figures. The, a lot of stuff that I do is very intricate and very time consuming, but I see it as like, you know, the detail for me is everything. And like I said, you know, I try to use very unique materials because, you know, that idea that I have in my head, I, I'm trying to materialize it and it has to look just the right way that I envision it. So based on the measurements of the figure that I'm making, I incorporate that all into the dimensions of the packaging and then I go online and try to find the materials that I need. The process takes about, sometimes takes a couple months, uh, depending on the type of project and how big it is. But every project takes a different amount of time to, to create from, from when it's conceived as an idea to when it becomes into like a physical form. Uh, total figures that I made, I think I'm on my seventh figure. <laughs> I have so many ideas, but I just wish I had more time. You know, I just don't have a time. I got, you know, I got work to do. I got um, family to raise. So it's just, you know, it's hard, but um, you know, I, on my free time, I try to make things happen, definitely. I'm proud of all of them, but uh, <laughs> the interdimensional guardian, yeah, 3.75 inch interdimensional guardian is actually up in that case. I have the prototype in there. That figure is just what, made everything possible for me. That's the one that kind of propelled me to try to make my own figures. Most of my figures, I try to make biographies, uh, little short, uh, like little biographies on each figure. But a lot of the stuff is, is, is taken from my short illustrated stories uh, that I've done in my zines. So I try to get some of those, some of those characters and make them into actual like resin casted figures. Each figure is about like um, something strange happening in the universe or some type of dying race or some type of alien that exists inside of some type of gallery that houses like all these artifacts from around the universe. That's, that's actually the, the, um, the tour guide. That's his backstory. I'm very passionate about the stuff that I make. Um, you know, everything, like I said, I, I'm very tedious and I'm, when it comes to making my stuff, I put a lot of detail into it and I try, to, I try to be unique about the stuff that I make. I try to bring something new to the table. If I could share some of that stuff with people that share my passion, then it's, it's, it's all worth it, you know. It's a, it's a labor of love for me, pretty much. Toys, I've been collecting toys. Uh, for quite quite some time now, I think since uh, 99, I think, or 2000. It all started off with the Spawn toys. I started collecting the Spawn toys first. And then from there, I started collecting the Beast Wars and so on and so on. Until I've acquired uh, this big collection you see behind me. McFarlane, I, he's just, I hold him in, in high regard because he's the one that kind of like transformed the, the whole toy the whole industry to, to how it looks now. He was pushing the boundaries in the way he was making the toys. I collect vinyl, I collect toys, comics, graphic novels, just pretty much like things that are kind of odd too. I like to surround myself with things that inspire me pretty much. I come in here and I look at all these toys and I just get that feeling of, of inspiration. I like to have that feeling, you know, when I had as a kid walking into that comic shop, seeing all those comic books, all those toys and just leaving there inspired. So I think that's why I've acquired this, this entire collection here. It's just to um, feel inspired, push myself to create something, you know, unique and better. Um, I mostly collect retro stuff and uh, just pretty much anything that catches my eye. I collect a lot of horror toys, science fiction toys. The toys that I collect, you know, I just don't see a toy. I see like the artist behind the artwork for the package, the person that worked on the design of the toy. Like for me, those are the things that inspire me, that I connect with. When I come across something, uh, I see I just, I can't resist and I just have to buy it. And um, yeah, I'm into like the animatronics. I'm into stuff that that's all 3D, like this thing here. I'm into masks. I do, I buy a lot of uh, unique um, uh, prints too. So it's just these artists that I kind of been following for a little bit. And then uh, when something was up on, on the website, I just try to pick it up. But um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm just a big fan of uh, things that are, that are unique kind of odd, eerie sometimes. As a kid, um, well, my parents never really, 
uh, we were kind of poor a little bit, so my parents would never really bought me like brand new toys. We would always get some at the thrift store. So um, for me, toys, like I said, they were always in, they're always and still are like an escape for me. You know, I, I go into a different world when I surround myself with these things. Just a source of inspiration and uh, nostalgia for me to take me back to more simpler times. It's an amazing thing. I say the pieces that I hold like in very high regard are the pieces that I played with as a kid. The supernaturals back here or like the visionaries, those were all toys that I was very attracted to when I was a kid. And obviously, you know, got the Ninja Turtles. Yeah, those are all figures that I had as a kid and you know, now now that I'm a grown up I have them in like minty minty condition <laughs> back there. Captain Power was way ahead of its time. Captain Power was uh, a toy that uh, incorporated out of the, the comb finish and those toys were just way ahead of the time. They were interactive with the, with, the, with the TV. It didn't work too well but the idea of trying to make that possible was just um, it was innovative and it was just uh, something that nobody had, had been doing. Um, I do sell my work. I would do a lot of shows. I would do a lot of zine fest, and that's where I would primarily sell my works or like uh, conventions and stuff. But when the COVID hit, I was kind of forced to sell my stuff online. I still sell my stuff online because you know we're slowly trying to get back into doing the conventions. But uh, yeah, if you if you want to look at look up some of my stuff, um, you could find me on Instagram under Epoch Art, and then from there there's a link to my website, my Etsy, and that's where I sell all my work. If you follow me on Instagram, I'm always posting up uh, flyers or just events that I'm going to be at. Like for example, last year during November, I was at um, DesignerCon. So, you know, just be on the lookout for that. And um, I think I might have uh, the LA Zine Fest coming up later this year. And I'm also going to be in DesignerCon later this year. I've been doing art for quite some time now. Everything that I've gotten into somehow is associated with artwork. So, you know, before I was doing street art, uh, before that I was doing like uh, graffiti art. And, you know, I started doing zines and now I'm doing toys. So I think 10, 15 years, 20 years from now, I'm not sure where I'm going to be at. You know, I got attracted into making toys a couple years back and that's what I've been doing since. But uh, later on, something comes up. I'm sure it's going to be whatever it is. Um, I'm sure it's going to be associated with artwork. So if it's welding, if it's, uh, <laughs> you know, paper mache, uh, whatever it is, uh, it's, it's, it's always going to be related to art and associated with art. So whatever it is, I'm going to push the boundary and bring the best to the table.